Hi everyone! In this video, we are going to talk about the most popular existence and uniqueness theorem for first order differential equations. And that's exactly how it's called the existence of a unique solution theorem. This theorem talks about requirements under which solution to the initial value problem exists and is unique. So let's first start by refreshing the idea of the initial value problem. So when we're solving this kind of problem, we're given a differential equation, and here we're focusing on the first order differential equations. Here's its general form. And besides the equation itself, we're given the initial condition, and that's usually how it's given to us. Well, x sub 0 and y sub 0 are certain numbers, certain values. And the question is basically saying is that among all solutions of the given differential equation, we need to find one containing the given point. So that is the condition for the problem. So there are two good questions to ask when we're considering an initial value problem. First, does a solution to this kind of problem exist? And second, if that solution is going to be unique? Well, the theorem that we're going to look at may help us to answer those questions. So let's read the theorem. I just want to tell you that it's okay if it's not going to make the total sense from the first time we read it, but we're going to try to figure out what exactly it says. So here we go. It says, let R be a rectangular region in the xy plane defined by x being between values a and b inclusive and y being between values c and d inclusive. That contains the point x sub 0, y sub 0 and its interior. All that is illustrated on this picture on the left. Here is that region, rectangular region, and we can see boundaries for y and for x. We also can see that point x sub 0, y sub 0 within that region. Let's continue. If f of x, y, and do you recognize this? This is partial derivative with respect to y, are both continuous on R. Then there exists an interval i centered at x sub 0 and a unique function y of x defined on i, satisfying the initial value problem. Okay, so to help you to better understand what the theorem says, I put together a quick summary. So this is what the theorem is saying. It's saying that if f of x, y is continuous on r, now what is that function f of x, y? Remember that in the initial value problem we're solving differentially equation. Currently we're solving the first order differential equation. And this is the general form of the first order differential equation. On the left we have the first derivative and on the right hand side we have a function of x and y. So when we look at the actual examples the right hand side looks like an expression involving x and y. So that's the function that theorem is referring to. Going back to the summary. One, one more time. So if that function, which is like the right hand side of that uh, first order differential equation is continuous on R and so that was the first condition now here's the second condition the partial derivative of function f with respect to y is continuous on R so if those two conditions are satisfied then there exists a unique function y equals f of x that, that satisfies our differential equation so that means that that function is a solution right? And that function contains point x sub 0, y sub 0 in R, which means that it's not just the solution to the differential equation, it's actually the solution to the initial value problem. Long story short, when those two conditions are satisfied, then we would know that solution to the initial value problem exists and it's unique, meaning that there is only one solution like that. But I also would like to add a few comments about this theorem. Okay, so the first note that I have is that this theorem, and above we have its summary, helps to see if a solution exists. However, it doesn't mean that we will be able to display it or find it by hand, in other words, because some differential equations simply cannot be solved in terms of elementary functions. And these are all the functions that you've learned so far in algebra, trigonometry, and pre-calculus courses. And the second note, if we're not really interested in the uniqueness and we only want to check if solution exists, then we can use another theorem. 
and it was proved by the Italian mathematician Giuseppe Piano. And I'm not going to be stating that theorem here in the official form, I'm just going to tell you its summary. So basically, according to that theorem, the only condition that's sufficient for the existence of the solution is that function f of x, y is continuous on R. So if we can show that, then it indicates that at least one solution to the initial value problem exists. Now, to make a little bit more sense out of this theorem, let's do an example. In this example, we need to determine a region of the x-y plane for which the differential equation dy dx equals xy to the power 1 half would have a unique solution to the point x sub 0, y sub 0 in that region. So we're going to be using the theorem that we just learned, but instead of showing that the initial value problem has a unique solution on a certain region, we need to find the region on which we know that given equation would have a unique solution at any point in that region. So this is how we're going to approach this problem. Remember those two conditions of the theorem? I'm going to quickly go to the previous slide. Here they are. f of xy is continuous on R, and the partial derivative of f with respect to y is also continuous. So these are the two conditions we're going to be working with. So in step one, we need to find where function f of xy is continuous. Once again, the function f of xy is the right-hand side of the first order differential equation when it's written in the general form. So that is f of xy. Okay, so I'm going to write it here. f of xy is xy to the power 1 half. And the goal is to find where that function is continuous. When we think about function continuity, we need to analyze where a function exists and where it does not exist. So, as we can see here, we have a product of x and y, but then y is raised to the power 1 half. As we know, power 1 half is the same as the square root, right? So, y to the power 1 half is the same as square root of y. So, what do we know about square roots? We know that when we only work with the real numbers, values inside the square root are only restricted to positive numbers and zero, right? Remember what happens when inside the square root is a negative number, like negative 4, well, square root of negative 4 would be 2i. Remember, we're getting complex numbers. And in this case, when we're dealing with domain and range, we only consider real numbers. So that means that y, in this case, can be only either positive or equal to zero. So y has to be greater than or equal to zero. In other words, when y takes these values, nothing can go wrong with the function. It remains continuous. Let's keep this in mind and move on to step two, because now we will have to work with the second condition from that theorem. In other words, we need to find where the partial derivative of f with respect to y is continuous. Let me remind you what partial derivative means. Well, it's derivative of function f, but the fact that it has y in the denominator means that we're going to be finding derivative with respect to y. We're going to be treating y as the variable. However, we're going to be treating x as a constant. Let's try it. First, I'm going to copy down the function itself. And now I will obtain the partial derivative. So I'm treating y as the variable and s as a constant. Well, since y is the variable and it's raised to the power, I'll just have to apply the power rule for differentiation. And that is when I take that power, place it in the front. Well, I already have x as the constant in the front, so it's still going to be there. And I will also have to reduce power by 1, so minus 1. So I'm going to get 1 half x. x is still there. We're treating it as a constant y to the power 1 half minus 1, negative 1 half. Or I can write it as 1 half x over y to the power 1 half. So that's the partial derivative. And now I have to look at the result and find where this partial derivative is continuous. Again, I have to look what is involved in this function and what kind of restrictions this function can have 
Well, first of all, I can see that y is raised to the power one half again. So that means that it should have that same restriction as in the first step. However, this time, y with its power also in the denominator. And every time when you have variables in the denominator, well, you always have to remember that values of that variable that create zero in the denominator should be excluded. That's where a function is going to be discontinuous. That means that instead of saying that y is greater than or equal to zero, I will have to say that y has to be strictly greater than zero. So continuous when y is greater than zero. So nothing goes wrong with the function when y values stay in that interval. So after we've found where f of x, y and the partial derivative of f with respect to y are continuous, and we did that as you can see by analyzing both functions, we need to put these results together to obtain the final answer. In other words, we need to find the intersection of the regions or intervals that we found in steps one and two. So both conditions have to be satisfied at the same time according to the theorem. What is the intersection of the regions? Well, intersection of two or more regions is another region that is part of each of those original regions. So in other words, it's like the overlap. Now, the two regions that we found, y is greater than or equal to zero and y is greater than zero, are very similar. So in this case, we just choose the one that's more strict, and that is y is greater than zero, because, well, y is greater than zero satisfies the second step condition, and y strictly greater than zero satisfies the first step condition. So that would be the intersection. So this would be the formal answer to this question. The differential equation has a unique solution through any point x sub zero, y sub zero in the region defined by y is greater than zero. And as an extra step, let's just sketch that region so, so that we can better visualize it. So if I set up the xy plane, where we would have positive y values? Well, here's the y axis right and the positive y values are above the x-axis so it means that everywhere above the x-axis y is positive so i'm going to highlight this and that's going to be the region now i also have to indicate or emphasize i should say that it's strictly greater than zero so for that i can do a dashed line on the x-axis it should be right on i just do it a little bit above so that everyone can see it but that will indicate that the x axis itself is not included so here's the region and for any point in the region there should be some interval in, in, um, around x sub zero on which the given differential equation has a unique solution so that's the idea of the existence of a unique solution theorem